Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content that I have on my channel. It is Sunday, October the 8th. And our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. And I almost lost my place. Trusting God Day by Day. And our devotion today is entitled Receive His Forgiveness. Our scripture comes from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1, out of the King James Version. And it reads, What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? And I think right after that, the words in the next verse start with, God forbid. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's hear how she gets into this. We often have very strong feelings and emotions that we don't seem to be able to control. The truth is, you don't have to make decisions based on your feelings. You have a free will. And you can choose to believe God's word more then you believe how you feel at the time. When you begin to live by the word of God and what you know through him instead of how you feel, your feelings will eventually change and line up with the word. And this is so, so, so very true, especially we have to be very careful and mindful of this because our society today, we have leaders, unfortunately, that are manipulating our feelings and our emotions to maneuver us into the agenda they want to put forward. And you just have to look, just look at the 2020 election and look at all the things that were said or done. Just look at the political ads. They're designed to have an impact on your emotions. And I've talked about that before and get people whipped up into a frenzy, fighting against each other and all this other stuff. And when it comes right down to it, when you sit down with somebody who might be of an, of an opposing political view, you're actually going to find that you have far more in common with that person than you do against them. Unfortunately, when they're whipping people into a frenzy, they're causing your feelings of hatred to rise up or not your feelings, but I often saw in the 2020 election actual hatred being thrown at the people who uh, who supported the uh, person that was op was the opposition to the one that they supported, and it was and this was happening in the church. Okay, I know it's happening widely outside the church, but when I saw it happening inside the church, I knew the devil was all over that. Because that's not Christ unity. That's not any of that. But that's how things are. We cannot depend on our emotions, especially watching the news and doing stuff today. If you're getting all up in your feels and you're being, you're watching things and strong emotions are coming for, are coming out of you towards a per particular person or towards a particular thing, especially when it's like, if those people support that person or that candidate, they're from the devil. And you got this outrage and this anger all directed towards that person. And they try to make you say, oh, that's justifiable because they're evil. Okay. We cannot allow ourselves to go down that road. We have to hear from the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I want to know what your word says, not what I'm being fed and causing my feelings to be all stirred up. Lord, hear me. <laughs> let me hear you. Okay? We cannot let our emotions lead our decisions. And for me, I can tell you the honest truth. When I went through the stuff I went through in 2019, oh, you know my emotions were all there. But the Holy Spirit was like, don't you choose anything right now. You're hurt. You're wounded. Hear me. Hear me. And I said, okay, Lord, I don't want to be confused about any choices that I make. And I trusted him as he spoke to me and as he brought people to me, because my choice would have been to leave instantly in 2019, to leave that organization then. And the Lord was like, no. And I said, yeah, put some time here. Okay, let me finish my 20 years. 
let me finish my 20 years because I had a few more months till my 20 year mark. I said, and then after that, I'll go. And then I was like, okay, Lord, I'll stay if you want me to stay, but let me go to the 20 years. And, and I knew I had my feelings there and I had people praying for me. And I says, I don't want to make a choice or a decision, an important choice or decision out of my emotions. I want the Holy Spirit to be leading me. And he did. So we got to be careful. All right, let me, enough of me. Let's get back into what Joyce is saying. Satan used guilt to steal from me for years. Okay, this is guilt. Anybody struggle with guilt? Okay, he used guilt to steal from her for years, which was often false guilt because much of the time I had nothing to be guilty for. I had repented. God asked if God asked God to forgive me and even believed that he had forgiven me. And yet I would still live my life feeling guilty and badly. I carried the burden of guilt everywhere that I went. I often said I did I did I did not feel right if I did not feel wrong. She didn't feel right if she didn't feel wrong. So if she wasn't feeling guilty, she didn't feel right. She felt like she almost had to feel guilty. At times, I even felt very spiritual because I always felt bad about my behavior. And now I understand God doesn't want me to feel that way. Every morning when I went to have my prayer time with God, I would go over one of two things, all of my problems or all of my mistakes. The Bible says, ask and receive that your joy may be full. I was asking for forgiveness, but I never took the time to receive the forgiveness. I'd like to encourage you from now on, when you ask God to forgive your sins for anything you've done wrong, take a moment and say, I receive your forgiveness right now. Hearing your own words, I receive that, that goes a long way. It goes a long way because faith comes by hearing. When you hear it, it gets down into your heart. If you're just thinking in your mind, I receive forgiveness, that's not as powerful. Just as praying in your mind, praying silently to yourself, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's more power when you speak the prayer because your ears hear it and that gets down into your spirit. Okay. Don't just ask, ask and receive so that you can take the next step and be filled with joy. One morning as I was attempting to spend time with God, he spoke to my heart and said, are you going to fellowship with me this morning or with your problems and your sins? Do you spend more time with your sins than you do with God? Do you spend more time thinking about what you've done wrong than about what he has done right? Remember, where sin does abound, grace and forgiveness and mercy does much more abound. I really love that. And once again, and I've said this in, a, in other devotions, we have to be careful when our emotions are high because you better believe the devil is going to be there to exploit those emotions, whether he keeps us busy the way Joyce described here, where we're always thinking about what we've done wrong or always thinking about the problems in our life. We can kind of get stuck in a holding pattern because we can't break past that. God wants us to get past that, to receive from him his forgiveness, his grace, his mercy. And now as you receive that in yourself and begin to believe it, you are then freed up to move on and pray how the Lord would have you to pray. He may be leading you to pray prophetic things, you know, be able to speak to you about other things aside from everything you've done wrong, all the mistakes you have or all the problems you have in your life. Okay. We don't want to spend time there. We can acknowledge them. I don't mean deny that they exist. You know, Lord, you know, I'm struggling with this. I receive your forgiveness for the sin that I committed. And I ask you to help me move past it because I'm not going to be stuck in a, the devil's holding pattern, unable to move beyond or be usable by the Lord because I keep going back to this thing that I did because I feel so bad about it. Give it the hiccups. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, y'all hear me, I suppose. Our trust in him today. When you go to God in prayer today, ask him to forgive you for whatever it is you need forgiveness for 
and then receive that forgiveness and trust his grace as you press on with joy for what he has for you. He is for you. He is not against you. He wants you to move past those things and he's continuing to do a work on you. This weekend was so amazing, but Philippians 1, 6 was kind of the theme. And with confidence, I say, he who began a good work with you, in you, is faithful to complete it. You can go look it up in different versions. And I know I just slaughtered that. I didn't say that exactly correct. But basically, it's confidence. Paul is saying this. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. He's continuing to work on us. And, and I think the, the, the scripture goes on to say until the day of the, of the Lord. And basically that means from now until Christ comes back, he's continuing to work on us. We should never be at a place where we feel we're done. There's nothing more for me to learn. We're not, not until the last breath leaves us, then we're done because <laughs> we've been brought home. All right, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word, Lord. And we know, Father, our emotions are beautiful things that you've given us so that we can experience joy and love and laughter. But we also know the enemy loves to exploit those things, guilt and anger. He wants to keep us stuck in holding patterns because he's the accuser. He's always the one who's going to be in our ear, reminding us of our mistakes, reminding us of our failures and uh, making us feel guilty. Well, we thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. And I pray for each person that struggles with receiving it, that you help them have a breakthrough today to receive your forgiveness and then move forward. We love you, Lord. And we thank you so much that you're continuing to work on us every single day. Give us eyes to see, Lord, and ears to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying to us and receive from you your grace and your forgiveness. We give you glory for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I'll be working in Children's Church today. I'm feeling a little bit worn out, and my allergies have now bloomed into a cold. So there's that. And so this comfort is what it's all about today. I, uh, I just said I'm not even going to mess with my hair. You guys, I know you can hear it in my voice. So my voice might be getting deeper over the next couple of days. I'm... I'm uh, boosting up my vitamin C intake <laughs> and I'm making sure that I'm putting socks on my feet and everything else I need to do to keep myself comfortable and warm. And I'm pretty sure I have some of that medicine that you take when you take it like in the first day of your cold and it's supposed to shorten your cold. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sure I got some of that. I'm going to go take some of that too because I got no time to be sick. I don't know about anybody else. I got no time to be worn out. Yesterday, at the picnic, which was fantastic. We had tons of food left over, which I'm taking the cookies and all that I'm taking to church today. Um, I started feeling a, a little bit of a burning throat on the way home. And I'm like, oh, uh. yeah. So, I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, I don't feel, I mean, I was wiped out. I fell asleep on the way home and I haven't done that in decades. So, Father, I know I'm tired because I was doing a lot of stuff, but it was a wonderful weekend reconnecting, reconnecting with people that I love dearly, brothers and sisters in Christ. I haven't seen some of them in a decade or more. So wonderful, wonderful to reconnect with them. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. God bless you and bye until next time.